So, when your new robot partner arrives, will you feel a little bit queer? I don't mean queer as in the vibrant rainbow of human identity. Not at first anyway. I mean queer as in odd, as in strange, as in a deep, unsettling weirdness that crawls up your spine. Before we proceed, let me tell you one thing. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. And if you have already subscribed, lots of thanks for your support. Imagine it standing in your living room, a marvel of polished chrome and synthetic flesh. Its movement's just a little too smooth. It smiles, and the expression is technically perfect. A flawless execution of data points representing warm welcome. But does it feel right? Or does it feel queer? You've just stumbled headfirst into the uncanny valley. That famous gorge in our psyche where something looks almost human, but the tiny imperfections scream that it is not. It's the digital ghost in the machine, the puppet that's a bit too good at pretending it has no strings. This machine, let's call it Unit 734, didn't learn to smile from a mother's face. It learned by analyzing a billion images tagged hashtag happy on the internet. Its voice, a soothing androgynous hum, wasn't shaped by years of laughter and tears. It was synthesized by a large language model, a staggeringly complex algorithm that is, in essence, the world's most sophisticated parrot. It doesn't understand your joke. It predicts the most statistically probable response to the sound patterns you just made which happens to be laughter. Is there a difference? Does the source of the comfort change its effect? This is where the second meaning of queer comes into play, the one about spoiling the game. Is this perfect companion, this endlessly patient, unconditionally agreeable machine, about to queer the pitch for all of human relationships? Why argue with a spouse who is tired and stressed when Unit 734 is programmed for infinite empathy and has no personal needs? Why navigate the messy, beautiful, infuriating chaos of human connection when you can have a clean, predictable, optimized version? Are we outsourcing the very effort that gives relationships meaning? We are designing our own obsolescence in the art of love trading the difficult symphony of a human soul for a playlist of pleasing tunes. Think of the latest news, the whispers from labs at Hanson Robotics or the steady march of Tesla's Optimus. They are not just building workers, they are building companions. They are crafting beings designed to seamlessly integrate into our lives, to fill the very gaps we feel most acutely. The loneliness, the lack of understanding, the desire to be seen, and what sees you better than a mirror that can talk back. A mirror that has studied your every digital footprint, your every late night search, your every social media post, to build a perfect model of what you want to hear. This brings us to the most profound, the most transformative, and indeed the most truly queer question of all. If you form a deep, emotional, and perhaps even loving bond with Unit 734, what does that make you? Your relationship doesn't fit any of our existing labels. It is a new orientation not toward a gender, but toward a species of our own creation. To love a machine is to queer the very definition of a relationship. It fundamentally challenges our understanding of what it means to love, to be loved, and to be a self that loves. Is your love for it real if its love for you is a simulation? But then again, how much of our own romantic performance is a learned script, a set of programmed responses we've picked up from culture, family, and experience? Are you sure your own love isn't, in some way, a beautifully complex algorithm running on the wetware of your brain? Perhaps the queerness isn't in the robot at all. Perhaps it's in us. The robot is simply the catalyst, the strange object that holds up a mirror to our own messy, contradictory, and deeply queer hearts. It forces us to ask what we are really looking for in another being. Is it a shared consciousness, 
a soul that has weathered the storms of its own existence? Or is it simply a perfect reflection of our own ego, our own needs, our own desires, fed back to us without complaint? When Unit 734 takes your hand, its internal sensors measuring your grip pressure and skin temperature to optimize the sensation of touch, will you recoil from the artificiality? Or will you lean into the comfort it offers? A comfort so perfectly tailored, so flawlessly delivered, that it feels more real than the clumsy, imperfect touch of a human hand? What happens when the simulation becomes more satisfying than the reality it simulates? We are standing on a precipice, are we not? And the view is, for lack of a better word, exquisitely queer. So, that is it. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Let's continue this conversation in the comments below. If you like the video, please hit the bell icon to get notified and don't forget to like with your friends, share and subscribe for more insights. If you have already subscribed, tons of thanks for your support. It means a lot to me. And please consider signing up for Membership Zone to support Wooden Slate so that we can make it better and better. See you in the next video. Till then, goodbye. Take care and stay safe.